Uh, <laughs> so how's how's your your show going, Dick? Like, yeah, I know. Are you and Sean still the the drivers? Um, yeah, it's just it's just me and Sean left. I've managed to alienate everybody else who uh, once worked with me. It's going great. Um, it's the only thing keeping me sane through this. We had this. We had a live show planned for a 200th anniversary slash Maddox's funeral live show where I was going to. Jesus gonna, Christ, you still poking that guy? Yeah, I'll, I'll never stop. <laughs> <laughs> if I were him, I would content. sue. And that guy, that guy, <laughs> that guy, that guy I, I remember when I was like, I don't know, it was like probably 2004, 2005, and I found Maddox's site. And I was like, God damn, this is the funniest shit ever. I, it was the first yeah. type of that thing that I found on the internet, and I thought his content was hilarious. And then now to know he's devolved into such a fucking loser is disappointing. Especially when he had that thing for the longest time where he's like, do you know that I could run ads on my site and make hundreds of thousands of dollars? And I choose not to. And even at the age of like 13, 14, I'm like, you're a fucking retard, dude. Like, you're not proving anything to anyone because you don't let fucking Plavix ad advocate their heart disease medication on your site. So, yeah. It, I, or it, like, it or is like funny. t-shirts, like D busted tees or Dick, whatever. I've got a question. So, yeah, sure. in my head, Maddox is this guy who did a show with you for a while, and then mm -hmm. you guys had a nasty split, and then he just mm -hmm. tried to live his life as a mild-mannered bookkeeper, helping small businesses or whatever it is that he nope. like. Like he did some post-public life, and you're still just picking at him and beating at him and sending followers well, at him. What's the truth? So here's, what, here's what actually happened after as we split, and then um, we did the podcast. It was we did the podcast. We split. He kind of. He did some shady business stuff. Like he took the website, he took the the RSS feed, which everyone was subscribed to, and did his new stupid show on there. Hmm. Uh, there was a lot of piddly shit that he did that I would just kind of make fun of. But the thing that the thing that pissed everybody off, and the thing that turned him into like a eternal pariah on the internet, was he made this video calling me a rape apologist. Like he's made a video taking yeah, something I said. Thing. Yeah, he ma he took a video, uh, or he took an audio of me saying something out of context and implied heavily that in some way I condone rape, which I don't think anyone, not even rapists, condone rape. <laughs> like they they know they're doing something wrong when they're doing it. Um, I I certainly don't condone rape or anything. Ill uh, yeah, well, let's just let's just leave it at that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then he he released it to the internet where he got absolutely shit on. So that didn't work out for him. So he went into his private Facebook and released it there, which is like all extreme left comedy people who are all already, it was, it was 2016. So they're all already pissed off at Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And they're looking to, they're looking to, to do somebody in for like any kind of this weird social justice infractions uh, that led to me getting kicked off of kicked out of UCB and, no one will, all of my friends that I worked with in comedy just don't want to have anything to do with me anymore. But after that, he still, like he had, Maddox had his girlfriend call my girlfriend's school and try to get her fired. We had right. to get a restraining oh order against her. Uh, he did the lawsuit. He, he, he pretended to be a woman reporter and tried to get another guy fired who was making fun of him. I saw like, that. Very gay. Why woman? Very. Well, because he wrote Maddox. And the crazy thing is, is he put this in his lawsuit. Like he he confessed to all this stuff in his lawsuit, like it was gonna win him favor with a judge by pretending to be a female reporter. Uh, he pretended to be a female reporter, and then emailed all of the female executives at Asterios Coconos's uh, company, asking if they wanted to comment on a on a article he was writing for Condé Nast about sexism and trolling on the internet. That his his name was Heather S. and he worked at Cond Nast. He misspelled it because Maddox is a fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if they wanted to comment on it, and if they condoned that kind of behavior, um, I don't know why he would confess to doing that in a million years. But because he's an That's idiot, that's insane. Like, so uh, what's he doing now? Well, he's still trying he... to make a living in the public. I don't know. He's got this Godzilla podcast that I think only exists so he can try to fuck his co-host. Like hmm. it's this 
really shrill. That's why we started bit. this show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then me and Kyle fucked. And I was so disappointed with the gag reflex Taylor mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah, it was disappointing, but you know, <laughs> overstated to say the least. Yeah, I got cut in. <laughs> You'd so. think with a big enough head and neck that the guy would be able to do better than that. <laughs> You'd think so. It turns out it's just a powerful jaw. So <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst. Legs, both you know, you can uh, I'm sorry, so I got we, really distracted by the thought of Taylor and oral sex. Yeah, no, that, we all did. We all did. <laughs> yeah, yeah Maddox really made a fucking fool of himself. Is there anyone For on years. his side? Because I've only heard Dick's side, and, and Taylor is on Dick's side. And like, it, is there another side to this, or is he just a by? By all means, have him on and get the side. He will not. Uh, the only time he's ever talked about it was Doug Tenaple, the creator of Earthworm Jim, mm -hmm. uh, had Maddox on his show, and everybody oh, was, that was a cool show. It was. Uh, Doug hates the show, loves the video game. Um, Doug didn't know anything about what was going on, so he was just reading these super chats and asking Maddox to answer them. <laughs> so that's the only time he's ever talked about it, but otherwise he's like uh, <laughs> he's just too good for it. I Are you guess. still working with the stereos? You guys used to... <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't talked to him in fucking forever. Oh. After the lawsuit, he yeah. What, what's, what's up with you and Asterios? Like, Because Asterios came on the show, and yeah... He, He's loud, but he's a very funny guy. I really like, enjoyed him, but him? the fans were split. Yeah, he's, you know, he's great, but he's, I think he, he likes his politics more than his comedy. Um, like, he, he likes to lecture people on what and what is and what isn't funny. And I think you kind of have to be a lot funnier than a stereos before you start doing that. Uh, personally, I thought he was very funny. I thought he was great on the show. I thought it would be great if he could control his liquor on the show a little bit more, but th whatever. I'm the last person to judge somebody on that. Uh, a fan, I hadn't talked to him for a year. He was totally <clears throat> off the show. He was leading people on like he was going to come back, but I think that's, uh, uh, I think that was bullshit uh, for the longest time, but he didn't want to lose people supporting him on Patreon, so he kept saying it. Uh, then I found out from a fan, like an offhand comment on Reddit that he was, he was at some fan meetup running his mouth about my private life to a bunch of fans, drunkenly, I assume. And then that same fucking week, he calls into my show to try to, to, try to guilt me into paying him $50,000 so he can sue Maddox back. And uh, I, pretty, I basically blew my stack about that. Um, at this point, on at this point I've written off, no, on Twitter, and then on the show, and then probably across a, a number of other <laughs> A number of other mediums, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was... Uh, I don't know. I, I'm probably hypersensitive to being fucked over behind my back at this point, and I don't think he was really a part of the Were show. Were you sensitive anymore. because you felt like he was being kind of lecherous about your Patreon success? No. Uh, I didn't care about that. It, I didn't get pissed off until I put it out there, like, hey, is this... Is this what is this true? What this guy is saying that is serious is saying this shit um, at a fan meetup of all places while he's asking me for money, and he sent me some he sent me some fucking apology like that was like oh I didn't say anything but even if I did like I'm real sorry and I thought ah uh, I kind of really hate you now for this like this made it much this made it so much worse than the nothing that I had heard from you yeah. for the last year so fuck you. Like you want, you wanted 50 grand and you couldn't even, like you couldn't call in, but you're out there. Like, I, and then, and then so the, you the, invited him to call in throughout constantly. this and he never did. No. And he always said it was because of the lawyer told him to, but they all fucking say that my lawyer said the same thing. Like we all knew it was a joke. Uh, and then after that, it turned into like, he had, he, one time he sent me a $700 invoice for a live show. With shit like he bought yogurt at the airport at home, and he sent me the bill for that, and I'm like, buddy, I mean, you're, I'm not like a company over here. You're sending... <laughs> what an asshole! <laughs> yeah, like, like he's tipping Uber drivers. <laughs> he's he's, he's, he's eating at TGI Fridays, and he's sending you the bill for the anytizers. Yeah, it, like he and he's the only one. I understand. I try to. I'm paying for everybody's stuff while they're doing this live show. Mm -hmm. Everybody's room and board, but he like he had to have his own room so he could get his fuck on with his girlfriend. It's like, all right, man, that's two hundred bucks. Send me the bill, but now you're sending me tips for Uber drivers and shit. Like this, I par, a big part of me thinks this is out of some kind of bitterness that you're acting like this. And then I hear you're talking shit. I'm just like, all right, I'm all in. 
All right, I, I 100% believe you're just a bitter fuck who's pissed that I I came out of the lawsuit with tons of money, but you were too big of a bitch mm. to say anything about it at the time. That's what I fucking think now. So fuck you. Go go have your comedy safe Garfield shows or whatever. Um, if you don't want to be a part of the show anymore. Fine. Fuck you. I I've I've lost plenty of friends now. Don't even feel losing one more. It's fine. Um, and that's where I'm at now. I hear you. Uh, it's too bad it didn't work out then.